Hello students, it's Mrs. Wolkowski. This is our virtual lab on enzyme reactions. We did this in November 2020. This particular simulation um, is going to be shutting down December 2020, so I wanted to make a video in case for some reason you've missed it and you need to go back and make it up later in the year. Um, so the title of this lab is How Do Substrate Concentration and pH Affect enzyme controlled reactions. So let me just first of all explain the setup here. Inside each of these test tubes there is a liquid. Inside that liquid there is an enzyme called amylase. Amylase ends in ASE as most enzymes do and um, amylase is a enzyme that's found in our saliva and the job of amylase is to break down starch. So these little powders that are on these papers here represent starch, different amounts of starch, powdered starch. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding them to the amylase in the test tube. And we're going to be looking for color changes. And then we're going to bump over here to the computer and look at the actual number of uh, molecules the substrate is broken down into. And if you remember anything at all about um, starch, you know it's a polysaccharide. Saccharide means sugar. So we're going to be breaking this polysaccharide down into monosaccharides or simple sugars called glucose. So we're going to be looking at how many glucose molecules we get from 0.5 grams of substrate, 1.0, 2.0, 4.0, or 8.0 grams of substrate. Now over here, we are not varying the temperature. This temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, represents body temperature. That's normal body temperature. For you guys, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is what you're used to, but in scientific terms, we use degrees Celsius. So we're not going to vary that, but we are going to be changing the pH as we go through. So let's do the, our first number. If we go to our lab here, we can see the first pH we need to collect data for is pH 3. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to decrease all of these. Sorry about that noise. All right, now that I've got the pH properly set, I'm going to add the substrate to each test tube. Oops. And you will notice now the darkest test tube is test tube number one. And then we have two that are light blue, two and three, four and five are kind of medium blue. Over here on the computer, the readout is that we got 19 molecules of glucose or sugar, simple sugars, from this, the breakdown of this much starch. In test tube two, we got 39 molecules of sugars per minute. In test tube three, we got 82 molecules of sugars per minute. And in test tubes four and five, we got 96 and 96. So that's what we're going to record here. 193982. Uh, excuse me. 96 and 96, I think it was. Okay. All right. Now we're going to reset. And this time we're going to bump the pH up to five. Once again, same amount of substrate in each test tube. Temperature still 37 degrees Celsius. This time we have light blue in test tubes 1 and 2, and we have a dark blue color change in test tubes 3, 4, and 5. If we look at the computer moni monitor to get our quantitative analysis, we find 3981168. 198 and 198 are the number of molecules per minute. So 3981, 168. Oh, I can't remember. 168. 198 and 198. Okay. Next time we're going to do pH 7. So reset. It's already at pH 7. Add the starch, which is our substrate, to be broken down into each test tube full of amylase. Temperature still at 37 degrees Celsius. 
test tubes one and two are kind of light blue, three is medium blue, and four and five are dark blue. And when we get our sugars per minute, we can see test tube one has 72, two, 145, 300, 350, 350. 72, 145, 300, 350, and 350. Okay. And if you are noticing anything here, you'll notice it kind of increases as we go down. But when we get to these last two, do you see that? No increase there, no increase here, no increase there. That's something to note. So it looks like we're hitting our maximum at this amount of starch right here. No matter how much starch we add, we cannot go, get more than this particular number. So we'll come back to that a little later here. Reset. This time we're increasing. So as our pH number gets higher, this solution is becoming more and more basic. It's an alkaline. At high numbers, pH 10 to 14 is alkaline. pH of 1 to 3 is kind of acidic. And anywhere close to 7 is neutral. Oh, this time again, 3, 4, and 5 are dark blue. And we get our readouts, 45, 91, 189. 45, 91, 185, 223, and 223. So again, these last two numbers are the same. Interesting. Let's see if the same thing happens at pH 11. This is our last pH. This is the strongest and most alkaline pH that we've tested because the number is closest to 14. All right, five grams, 0 0.5 grams of substrate, 1.0 gram in subs test tube two, 2.0 grams in test tube three, there's four, and here's eight grams in test tube five. Still at 37 degrees Celsius, no temperature change there. And if we go over here, ah, the numbers go down, 24, 49, 103. 24, 49, 103, 121, and 121. And there we have it. So that's the completed data chart. Um, the one thing I want to point out on this data chart, like I said before, is 4.0 grams of starch seems to be the maximum. Once we go above that, we do not get any more uh, we can't get any more sugars per minute. So we know now that 4.0 grams is a maximum for the amount of substrate. Um, for the rate of reaction, can you tell which pH gave us the best, meaning most, sugars per minute? So which pH do you think is best? You're right, that neutral pH right in the middle, pH 7, is our maximum. All right, I hope this helps. Uh, Finish up your lab and turn that in, and I'll see you next class.